My name's Anthony, and this is my workshop. And this is my paintbrush. I'm a self-taught fabricator and prop builder. Over ten years I've built a variety of things, from movies and comic books, anime and manga, even to video games. This is my hobby, my passion, and my life. Come join me. This is Mad Wizard Web. Hello you awesome guys and girls, and today we are going to do Finn's Golden Sword of Battle from Adventure Time. Huge Adventure Time fan, really looking forward to this build. It's going to be using a lot of processes that I've never used before, um, and I'm just really, really eager to see how it's going to turn out. Um, if this video gets enough views, I'm probably going to do Jake's Sword, I'm probably going to do the Blood Sword, and if all goes well, probably uh, Marceline's Space Axe as well. So, but yeah, really looking forward to this, so uh, there's no time like the present, so let's do this thing. So I'm just marking up the, uh, marking up the sword, probably looking at about 24 inches for the blade. And probably a good, I would say, Two and a half inches for the actual blade width. Just um, that's just uh, Taylor's chalk.
Okay, one thing I wanted to uh, show you guys, um, the plate that I actually use to build these things, um, I don't know if it's across the board with uh, this hardened steel plate, but uh, when you buy it, it comes with this really rough texture on it, and that is a bit of rust, but it's also in the metal as well. I've just ground or just de-rusted a little bit there. I don't know if you can see that, but there's all that pitting in there, and I don't know if that's just due to the rolling process when it's actually fabricated. So sometimes depending on the project that you're actually doing this can actually work out in your favor like you know if you wanted a sort of like old antique sort of effect um you can just basically take the rust off of that and keep all of the pitting in there but if you're trying to do um something where like the blades are nice and smooth like practically a chrome finish then you got to sit there and grind it all away which is basically the next job so yay more grinding Before grinding, after grinding, bit of a difference. So yeah, to yeah. And then obviously I'll get some finer grit just to get rid of all of these scrapes, but I'll do that at the end. So yeah, got to do it all again now. Yay! I'm going to use this as the cross guard, so this will be eventually put on there like that and then shaped up just put in some marks there so I've got a drill cross here in order for it to be slotted in that's the next job Now you see, if I had a milling machine, I'd be able to just chuck this in the mill, mill it out, and yeah, it'd be job done. However, unfortunately, I don't have a milling machine, so I have to make do with uh, what I have. So I'm going to have to draw a collection of holes across this section, and then cut them out, sand them or file them I should say and then uh, hopefully then it shall fit so yeah here we go So this is the part I'm going to use for the pommel. Uh, what this is, this is the end um, sort of joint bit off of a gate hook. I say, if you imagine that there's a massive thread on this side and that bolts onto the gate, and then you get a pin that you bolt onto the actual side of the gate, and then that hooks on to the gate in order for it to hinge like that. So I bought 
um, this a while back um, to use the thread for another project but I was left with these um, these off cuts and it makes an absolute perfect pommel it's weighted quite nicely it's got a hole in it so I can put the gemstone uh, I've just got to sand that bit off there and I've got to recess this in a bit more did a bit of a test on that but these are also galvanized as well I had to remove the galvanization and eventually I'll have these gemstones set inside it and these gemstones funny enough um, they used to be cupboard drawer um, knobs uh, which I just cut the end bit off and these are actually these are actual glass as well which uh, makes a change because I thought they were resin when I bought them and hopefully once it's all done it'll be seated just like that but uh, it's not perfectly flush at the moment but hey we're like you know just a bit more grinding a bit more welding and uh, yeah should be alright <coughs> going to be attaching the threaded rod now
If you haven't guessed already, I'm doing the handle. What I'm doing here is I'm just cutting a slot. So these are two blocks that I'm going to glue together. And I just need to knock out this side and do this side as well. They'll be glued together and then shape it by sanding so that we can fit the tang in. So that's what we're doing now. Well, that was easy. He says hoping. Okay, so this is the handle all put on. As you can see, it's a bit uh, blocky so far, but that doesn't matter. So, because we're going to sand it down, so it's all nice and smooth and feeling good. I've only just put that on there just so that we can see how much to take off. So, a bit of sanding involved. What do you reckon? Hmm? So I just finished sanding the handle and it's looking absolutely fantastic. Also it's still got to be wrapped in leather and stuff like that but that is just feeling so nice. It's fantastic. Sorry I keep zooming there. And actually get a full scale look at the sword now. So yeah, I thought I'd show you guys and girls. Look at that. <laughs> that is so cool. So, feels quite nice. So. Brilliant. <laughs> so I've just taken the cross guard off there and uh, just marked it up quickly so these bits here are going to be ground away so it's got a bit of a chamfer to it I'll say the uh, there's lots of depictions from the cartoon and on the internet uh, showing different designs but I quite liked this um, sort of radius sort of design so it's going to take me a little while to basically grind all of those in but uh, yeah
one down or two down two to go okay so that's the uh, cross guard shaped and that it's looking good it's looking awesome if you look if it focuses down there yeah there we go I haven't polished out all of the scratches because I'm going to be putting more scratches in it uh, mainly if you look at the reference pictures it's got lots of massive gouges here and here I think like you know and then it'll have to be replicated on the back so there's no point making it like mirror polish perfect also there's a slight defection in the metal there where it was like rust pitting it's probably why I got it so cheap because it was defective but I like defective things because they're cheap and uh, I don't mind grinding them out so anyway cross guard is almost finished just got to put the uh, the gouges on it and uh, ready for the next process okay today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be turning these pieces a nice dark black color so in the cartoon from what I've been able to see um, there's lots of different depictions and that but I thought that the one that I liked the best was this sort of like dark antique black sort of look so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rust up these parts and then I'm going to boil them and then afterwards they should turn a nice black sort of colour and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to heat them up with a propane torch and I'm going to spray them with this this is a concoction that I made myself this is just a combination of water vinegar and salt um, measurement wise I mean I just eyeballed it like half a cup of water half a cup of vinegar you know probably about a tablespoon of salt something like that but I've let all the salt dissolve in the mixture so what I'm going to do now is uh, just get the propane torch heat this up spray some of this on there do a couple of coats and uh, yeah watch it rust all that work of grinding down the drain thing for me to do is just uh, let those cool down naturally and like the residual heat of the metal so yeah I guess just let them smoke away and see what happens so this is what the pieces look like after they've dried after the um, that vinegar salt process. So they're looking pretty cool. I mean, I would have hoped that the um, rust would have penetrated a bit more. It's 
worked a lot better on this one than it has on this one but uh, I kind of like that blotchiness that's on there so I went out after they'd um, um, after the spraying and just dunked them in a little bit of water and just let them aerate just for the rust to uh, adhere a bit better so I might have to repeat the process again in order to uh, build up a more sufficient layer on them but uh, yeah if I've got to do it again I've got to do it again such is life so what I've got here is uh, just a little camping stove that I've got with a pot of boiling water so it's just coming up to the boil now I might just turn that up a bit and when it starts boiling like I need like a rolling boil so I'll dunk the, uh, the parts in and uh, see what happens so it's been about 10 minutes or so I've just turned the power off so it's stopped bubbling now but uh, the water's turned this horrible sort of like muddy sort of colour light so visually it looks like it's worked so let's pull one out and see what it's like oh yeah oh yeah that's cool yeah I like that so let's check the other one out Looking good, looking good. So, the idea now is to dry them off before they start regularly rusting. <laughs> so, right. so that's them all dried off. Looking very, very nice. So I'm probably just going to chuck a bit of wax over the top of them just to prevent them from rusting any further but that's exactly the Ooh, ow, ow, too. still hot um, yeah so I'm just gonna chuck a bit of wax on there before they start rusting any further but that's the look that I was after so really chuffed so what I'm currently doing at the moment is I'm just roughing up the surface to attach the gemstones to the pommel but uh, because it's got a coating on it now I didn't know if the araldite that I'm going to use or the two part epoxy that I'm going to use to glue in the gemstones will actually adhere properly to the surface so I'm just using a bit of sandpaper to roughen up the surface take it back to clean steel and uh, Hopefully after that it should stick nicely. Never strips, handle. So this came in the post today, leather dye, royal blue. So we need to dye up the uh, the leather handle. I mean, I do like the uh, the raw 
sort of look of this but hey ho it's supposed to be blue so blue it shall be i'm going to use a toothbrush while we're using a toothbrush no particular reason it's just what i had to hand you could use a rag you could use a cloth you could use a paintbrush whatever you like so anyway this has to be blue so we'll give that a bit of a shake i've had to dawn the gloves good thing they're blue Otherwise, if I wasn't wearing gloves, I'm probably going to look like I've throttled a smurf. But anyway, right, so let's get on and do this thing. bloody mess on the table, I know that. So we can always put on another layer a bit later if we need to, but uh, looks pretty good as it is. Alright, so that's it all coated up there. Actually the camera's actually picking it up quite nicely actually. I mean, in the light, I mean, it is, it is going blue, it is going blue, as it's drying, it is going blue, so, that's good, so, but I guess we'll see when it dries, so, we'll leave that there to dry, hopefully when we come back, it'll be nice and blue, okay, so I thought I'd give you a look to see what the handle looks like I say when I dyed it up it went really really dark I mean it is blue but it's a really really dark rich blue I mean if I was to do this again I probably would use a much more lighter sort of blue but uh, what I did afterwards is I hit it with um, my scotch pad on my buffing machine over there and just to scratch up the surface and it's gone to this sort of look now which I quite like. So, also some of the bits are coming off, so I'll probably just re glue those. But uh, yeah, I mean, it was a mistake, but uh, not, not a bad mistake. Right, I'm going to start putting the, uh, the lines in from where I need to grind to put the bevels on. So we'll start grinding that in and I'll mark up the other side and do the other side a bit later. So what I'm doing here is I'm using a slide ruler just to um, check that the um, the chamfers that I'm grinding in or the bevel that I'm grinding in are going straight down the blade. So because this is a six millimeter thick piece of hardened steel obviously we want the two sides to meet at three millimeters either side so I've got this set to three mil and as I've ground this bit away as you can see I'm just sliding the ruler down to make sure that I'm not going under or if I'm going under and just make adjustments like here for instance is slightly too much out. If you saw when I was actually grinding it I was going from 
start to finish just one continuous line going like that and the reason that you do that is because you're left with a nice or as nice of a flat grind as you possibly can um, if you just went in there sort of like just doing that I mean you can be left with um, sort of grooves inside the uh, the initial grind so it's better it's a bit more time consuming just to do length after length after length but uh, um, you will get a nice finish afterwards and minimalize the amount of cleanup that you will have to do on it so also I want to try and get rid of some of these lumps as well that were in here Yeah, it's looking a lot nicer. Right, so now that's running nice and parallel. You do the other side, and then you clamp it up like this, and then you do like the initial one. And then I've got to do this side as well. So now I'm just defining the bevels, just going over with the grinder and just making sort of like a visual inspection sort of like is the centre running parallel down the blade. I can see right now that the end there isn't symmetrical with this, and it's a bit wobbly. So I'll just go back in with the grinder and true it all up. So this has got the uh, the edge on it now. So I've got to go back and do some cleaning up, but it's got a nice edge on it now, so I'm happy about that. But I just need to sort of tidy up the corners and do like a final polish on it. Well, sort of like a final grind polish and. Uh, that's nearly it, nearly done. Now, the more eagle-eyed viewer will probably be saying, Anthony, you've done all of this, but where's all the scratches? Where's all the notches? Well, don't panic. I'm putting them in now.
So the final job on this bad boy is uh, it needs a bit of bling. This is Finn's Golden Sword of Battle, so the blade needs to be gold. So there's lots of different processes that you can use to um, plate a piece of steel. You can use electroplating. You can uh, wax it with a special um, sort of like metallic. Um, sort of wax but what I've decided to go for after a lot of experimentation is I'm going to heat brass it so you use a brass wire brush like this and you heat it up with the propane torch and you heat it all up um, I'm not too sure how hot you need to get it I think it's something like just so that you can't touch it I think is the um, is somewhere in the region but uh, you don't want it like red hot because it will just like melt the brass because brass melts at a lower temperature than obviously this steel does so yeah basically heat it up brush it with this wire brush and uh, yeah it should turn gold so that's the last job here we go golden sword awesome I've just sprayed it with a bit of WD-40 so that uh, it can cool down nicely but that is looking awesome so this is all the pieces laid out um, this is like final assembly or so I've done everything with it so I'm really really looking forward to seeing how this actually turned out all together I'm so I'm so excited so yeah let's put this thing together see how it turns out so, put that on there so this is the first time it's all gone together There we go. Wow. That looks awesome. That is pretty, pretty cool. Look at that. Let me try and get it all in the photo. There we go. <laughs> oh, so, so happy how this came out. So, so happy. Right. I think it's time for some glamour shots. Cue the music.
still here after the video, I'm guessing that that probably means you like what you saw. You want to see a bit more. If you did like the video, give us a big thumbs up down at the bottom of the screen there. And subscribe so you never miss an episode. If you can't wait that long, you might think about heading over to the Mad Wizard Weapons Facebook page where you can see sneak peeks and previews on what I'm building next. Oh, and if you've got any suggestions on something that you might like to see me build next, put a description down in the comment box below and who knows, maybe I might be building something you suggest very soon. So, until next time, see ya.